Hey guys, it's your best fight friends. I'm Kelsey, that's Rachel. And we're doing a bonus episode because I really want to talk about the WBC creating a new weight class. Some people think that boxing has too many weight classes. 17 so, of them already. 17, possibly 18, right? At least the WBC it's 18. And then it when it started, I can't say when it started, but like at one Originally, point Originally there, there were eight weight classes in boxing. And there are a lot of people still, are, there are people in the sport today who wish we could go back to the eight. Yeah. Original and eight. I was uh, listening to Roy Jones Jr. Um, on Joe Rogan's podcast and talking about uh, Joe Rogan saying he kind of wished in the UFC that there were more weight classes because it can make it difficult for some fighters to to you be know, successful. They kind of get lost in these you're like, in the middle, bigger weight classes or wider, broader weight classes. Mm -hmm. But, and then, you know, Roy Jones was saying that in boxing, he kind of felt like there were too many. That if you took away, like, some of these weight classes, it would thin the herd and you well, know you who the real champs yeah, were. Yeah. Is what he said. The original eight, you did there weren't, that's why in the original eight, I mean, you see all these guys today that win, oh, they've won world titles in three different weight classes. Well, in the original eight weight classes, maybe, maybe they would have got two. You know what I mean? Because right, yeah. They so wouldn't it's be able hard. to move up. That and sometimes high. I wonder, like, oh, is it is it really that significant to like move up or down one weight class? Like, it just depends. How yeah. significant is that? And so, but we're here to talk about the WBC creating yet another weight class. And some people might say it's so that they can make more money. Now, Ooh, I would. Say I don't that. know. I would. I don't know. I the haven't talked to the WBC. Minds. But it seems, or even, I won't even say that they are purposely doing it. But I've seen addict behavior in my own life before. <laughs> I know that sometimes people can make decisions without really knowing what they're doing and why they're doing it. And it would seem to me that the only reason to create a new weight class, especially suggesting where they suggested it be, between somewhere between cruiserweight and heavyweight, we don't need another weight class there, right? That we went through a decade of there not being very many heavyweights at all, right? And we've gone through many decades of people barely caring about the cruiserweight division anyway. And so now we're going to take those two classes and put them into three. What else could there be a reason for that, Rachel? Well, I don't necessarily uh, disagree with the WBC. I don't think it's such a bad idea where they've inserted okay, this weight class. Okay, tell me about the weight class. So, here's the the old lineup. We had light heavyweight, cruiserweight, heavyweight. And light heavyweight and was 175. Cruiserweight, cruiser that's the top limit, is 200 heavyweight unlimited. Unlimited. Now, in the WBC only, the light heavyweight remains 175. Cruiser, the max is now 190. Super Cruiser has a max of 224, and then you have Heavyweight Unlimited. So what they've done is they've put a weight class in between Cruiserweight and Heavyweight. The max at 224, so that means from 191 to 224. It's all the fighters that fall into that weight. Yeah. And then you have Heavyweight Unlimited after that. And we've... I've, Okay. We've talked about this being that the heavyweight division, there are some heavyweights that are so giant that if you want to come in at, say, 201 and fight in the heavyweight division, it would be super hard. Imagine Evander Holyfield having to fight Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua. Like, could he? I think that it would be different. Now, would, would, like Evander coming in and fighting at Super Cruiser, get the same notoriety that he got by going up to heavyweight? Well, no. I, this is, I firmly disagree with your Evander Holyfield analysis. Okay. Evander Holyfield, I may six, not be. He's six foot three. He fought in an era of big Riddick Bowe and Lennox Lewis, who maybe weren't six nine, but Lennox Lewis is one of the greatest heavyweight champions ever. And Riddick Bowe on any given night was too. Both those guys are super heavyweight. He could compete with those guys. Also, saw him when he was old beat up uh, the big seven-foot Russian guy. He should have got that decision. Didn't okay, that maybe Evander Holyfield listen, was a bad example. But I get what you're saying. You think that, that that let's say a guy who's as tall as Evander, but maybe not one of the ten best heavyweights ever, yeah. wants to compete and make money in the division, 
How is this guy six foot three? Let's say he's about two fifteen. How is he supposed to compete with six nine two eighty? Yeah, that's an incredibly difficult thing to do. But that's not my problem, Rachel. <laughs> then you should cut down to one ninety nine, and you become a cruiserweight. Because in the old days, you'd either have to be one seventy five, or you fight to fight giants. Now, granted, there weren't as many giants back then. Right. I'm just saying that I feel like the landscape of the like human being is changing a little bit, and that we have gotten. Not we, so, but some people have gotten much bigger, much more athletic. I will and say. And so I do think it's hard to compete if you're trying to fight, you know, if it's hard for you to make the cruiserweight limit, then you're just in the heavyweight division and that it can be difficult. Now, yeah, granted, but what I'm is saying is that there's not enough with, interest already in the cruiserweight division. So would you, do you think, so cruiserweight was max 200. This puts it the max at 190. Do you think maybe cruiserweight should? Well, I will tell you what I think. I'm Just tell me ask. what you think they There's, should do. This I I can kind of I can kind of understand. But what I thought is I thought there should be more fluidity in that the cruiserweight class should be broader. So the max shouldn't be 200. It should be higher than that. But fighters. The heavyweight could still start at 200, but the max for cruiser, I'm saying don't be a cutoff. Let the weight classes, like, overlap, and then the fighter can just choose to fight in whichever one. Now, I feel like I just thought of that pretty much on the spot, and there's probably a lot of holes in that. Okay, well, <laughs> I think, like, if you're going to add a weight class, I say you add a very, very tiny weight class. <laughs> you know, like... 85 pounds or something ridiculous just because I think it would be precious and I think that you know the whatever name they came up with for that like it's, it's not it's going to be like tiny weight or something it's going to also going to be just as cute no people already like what, don't what about watch one championship in MMA that have atom weight the lowest like weight tiny class weight. Nat weight. what's smaller than a fly a gnat I'm just saying that there is an Lee argument Lee. that can be made for what the WBC has done. And yes, are they making more? Will they make more money because of this? Maybe. You know, like, they really need to get the other three sanctioning I mean, I, board, you but. I You just helped me realize my dream of fighting in the super cruiserweight limit. <laughs> right? I'm, this is yeah. maybe my ticket out of the heavyweight division. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Been... And now I know that cruiserweight like already doesn't get like a lot of eyeballs on it. Like it's but I don't know why that is exactly because there's tons of other weight classes that are all popular. I just I wonder if I mean you have to be a great cruiserweight to get attention and, and it's yeah. it's because my opinion is because there were too many weight classes in boxing. It's because if you're a cruiserweight, if you're What's the one thing that, if you're a great cruiserweight, what, what do people want to see? They want to see you move up because to Because you're really a heavyweight in, in <laughs> most people's eyes, right? Well, kind of, but sometimes we do that, right? And we're looking at somebody like uh, Usyk, and I think heavyweight is going to be like a t big challenge. Well, I thought that until I stood next to okay. Alexander Usyk, and he was a mountain of a human being. But I was like, this guy's going to be fine. You stood next to Tyson Fury yet. I haven't, but I have stood... <laughs> Next to a lot of big heavyweights in my in my days, then like I feel like I don't know. It's an interesting topic for sure. We yeah, got... I know where I first heard about this. So I think WBC was talking about this before they actually like did it. Now they've gone and done it. And I was uh, in the SN Boxing Facebook group, and I they had a thread going on that, and it was really interesting to read everybody's thoughts on it. And people had, like, real thoughts. Like, uh, SN Boxing Facebook group isn't just, like, a, you know, it's not a cesspool of the internet. It's really, like, people go there and have, like, thoughtful conversations about the sport of boxing. So that's where, and, and people had all kinds. People were for it. People were against it. People had different ideas. It was really, really interesting. But, yeah. Maybe we just blow it all up and have a free-for-all. There are no weight classes. There are no, and there are no rules. This is UFC 1, baby. You weigh 100 pounds <laughs> and you want to go challenge Tyson Fury? By all means, let's do it. God, you're such a sadist. <laughs> you're like, you're like. <laughs>